I'm Stacey McGuire, your principal, and I'm asking that you sit back, not necessarily relax, but really pay, pay close attention to this video that Mrs. Denniston and the Mass Media Group and the Westfield Police Department have put together. We know that if you don't feel safe at school, you cannot do and accomplish the things that you need to accomplish. And so we take school safety and our procedures and processes so seriously. We also know that we can't drill for every scenario. We cannot plan for what people are going to do. But what we can do is try to empower you so that you feel confident that, God forbid, a safety incident happens at Westfield High School, you feel calm, you would feel confident, and again, you would feel empowered to do what you needed to do to keep yourself, your classmates, and Westfield High School as safe as possible. So again, as we kind of make this shift, we're still gonna run through drills in the future, but what you're going to be hearing more and more of throughout this year and next year is the importance of understanding why we do the drill and, and to what greater good that serves. So again, it's not just about practicing and doing the drill and checking it off the list. It's about going through and understanding the situation and being aware of options you have and how you could choose to respond. So again, relax a little bit, but please pay really close attention because I don't know that there's anything more important than your safety. Thanks, Westfield High School. I'm Mrs. Denniston, and I'm one of our assistant principals, and safety um, has become a real priority for us, uh, our administration, and our school here. So I want to introduce to you Officer Kim Daniels, who we are very lucky to have with us. And we want to talk about something very important, and it's something that has been on our minds all year, um, not just with the recent shootings, but I think now more than ever, we need to really make sure that everyone knows our plan. And so what I want to walk us through today answers this question. What would you do as students or as teachers if you thought you heard gunshots? You're in your classroom and you thought that you heard gunshots. I want to walk you through an acronym called ALICE that will be something great to keep in your mind and it'll tell you exactly what to do. A is alert. And this means that you are alerted to danger or a potential danger. So at that point, it's become apparent something needs to be done. Now, L is lockdown. And before we even talk about this, though, Officer Daniels and I have been in conversation a lot about this. The biggest thing is you may have been told in the past, go hide in the corner. That may be what you need to do, but the very first thing is, if you can get out, you get out. If you can't get out, if it's not safe to get out, then you will go into your lockdown positions. What does that mean? It means that you make sure doors are locked, the doors are shut, blinds are closed, computer monitors are turned off, and then you go in your location we have practiced, which is probably gonna be in the back of the classroom, on the floor, and you're quiet. So we've walked through A and L, alert and lockdown. I is inform. This is very important. At this point, whether you're a teacher, okay, and in a situation where a teacher's not in the room or there's a substitute, I want students, you to feel empowered as well, you call 911. I is inform. Call 911 and call administration. Call our front desk, okay, or get a hold of an administrator. Um, if there's danger, you may want to use text messaging instead. Um, at this time too, hopefully police will be on their way. You'll put your red card in the window to alert police to know, okay, this is, this is an area where the intruder has been heard or seen. And then once you report it, once you've informed it, it's gonna be the responsibility of our front office people, our administrators, somebody's gonna get on that PA system and let the school know we're in lockdown. C is counter. Now, we hope that we don't get to this step, but if you are at the counter step, what Alice says is you fight, okay? It's fight or flight. Still, if you can get out at this point, you get out of the room through the window or through the door. But if the intruder is in your midst, it's time to fight. What does this mean? 
It means that you may be piling podiums and desks and heavy books up against the door so that it would take the intruder longer to get into the classroom. Um, it may also mean that you are brainstorming as a class. Are there any objects that could be used as potential weapons, a baseball bat, um, some kind of object in your classroom that you could use to fight if you had to? So that's counter, that's the C. And the E is evacuate. This may happen if it's safe to do so before the whole scene is clear. Um, or you may be in your lockdown positions and once you've heard that it's, that it's okay to evacuate, then you may evacuate there. But here's the most important new information that I wanna give teachers and students today. And that is when you evacuate the building, whether it's through a window or through the door, where do you go? Our site reunification spot is the middle school across the street, okay? And what you would do is you would go on foot and you would go to the middle school to the West Gym, which is doors five, six, and seven. Um, and you would just go in there and the middle school knows, the administrators know, the office staff knows, that's where we are going to have our reunification. And we are going to, at that time, take attendance and account for all of the students who, um, who are there. This is very important, and Officer Daniels, I may ask you to reiterate this as well, but very important not to go to your cars. And Officer Daniels will talk about from the police perspective what that may look like, but even more so, it's very important that you go to our site reunification because we need to account for all students and make sure that everyone is safe. So where would you go if we evacuate? You would go to the West Gym of the middle school across the street. This is an announcement. We are on a code red lockdown. Intruder in the auditorium. We are on a code red lockdown. Intruder in the auditorium. Now I want Officer Daniels to talk about the police perspective, what you can expect during a lockdown situation. I'm Officer Daniels with the Westfield Police Department and I'm also assigned as Westfield School Resource Officer. So here's what, here's what you can expect if police come into a building, and we will in an active shooter situation. The first thing is that when we enter a building, we will have rifles, handguns, drawn, and we will be pointing them probably in your direction. What we don't know when we enter a building is who's the shooter, who's not the shooter, and we can't make any assumptions. If we assume, we have to assume that everybody we see is the shooter and we have to weed out 
the innocent people. So if you see a police officer pointing a gun at you, they'll be giving you directions. Hands up, hands up. If your hands are up, then we know there's nothing in them, and that's what's important. Then you'll be passing by the officers. They'll be telling you, get out, get out, get out. Very simple commands is what you'll get. Just follow the commands. If you see a gun laying in the hallway, in a classroom, or you've seen the shooter and he's, he's emptied a gun and he's dropped it somewhere, don't pick up the gun and carry it openly through the hallway because then you look like the shooter and then we have problems because, again, we have to assume everyone's a shooter and weed out from there. So if you're carrying a gun, it's a very dangerous situation for you. There should be a command, drop the gun, and it better go down immediately. So you're trying to get out. That's your main purpose. Listen to the officer's commands. If you've been injured, if you've been shot, uh, our responsibility is to get to the shooter as quickly as we can and eliminate the threat. So if you've been shot, injured, you'll see police officers who are in the initial response team passing right by you. We can't stop to help anyone until we've eliminated the threat. And then we bring in other people from fire department, paramedics, uh, our entry team and so forth go back and we start taking care of the injured. So that's what I, that's in particular what I want you to know is that police are not going to stop to help you if you're injured. We can't at that point in time and we will be pointing guns at you and we need you to be very clearly not our shooter as you pass us. And what happens, Officer Daniels, if a student were to go toward their vehicle and try to drive away, drive away? How might that be misperceived? If we have people in vehicles driving away, quickly particularly, because that just looks suspicious, then again, we will have people outside the building and that will draw our attention to your vehicle. We may think that you are the shooter trying to leave the scene. And the problem with that is twofold. Number one, we may be pointing guns at you and in an attempt to stop your vehicle. And number two, um, you've now drawn our attention to your car when it needs to be inside the building because we still have a shooter there. The other thing is, in some of these shootings that we've had nationwide, there are secondary devices that have been placed in parking lots or near vehicles with the intention of, of causing injury or death in the parking lots as people do try and come out. So if you can stay away from the car, stay away from the parking lot, that's your best bet. If you somehow don't think about what you're doing and you just jump in your car and you take off and you get away from the school um, safely, then what I want you to remember is your fellow students and their parents and all the people we're trying to account for so that we can make notifications that your daughter is safe, your son is safe. So if you happen to get in your vehicle and get away safely, then please come back to the reunification site at the middle school or make a phone call to school administrators so that we know where you are so that the school can start to account for every student and the safety of every student. And we know we've given you a lot of information today, but I just want to highlight a few important things. Remember what Officer Daniels had told us about the importance of how to act when police are uh, pursuing the active shooter. And then don't forget ALICE acronym, alert, lock down, inform, counter, and evacuate. You can expect that we will have a code red drill and we want to put these things into place. Thank you so much for your undivided attention today.